do not let your insecurities become bigger than God. Mm -hmm. God is so much bigger than our flaws. God is so much bigger than the thing that we struggle with. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think a lot of times we give more power to our fears and our insecurities than we do to the Holy Spirit. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the More Purpose Podcast. Where we talk everything from faith to finances. I'm your host, Claren, and your co-host, Marlon. And we are back with another video. Yeah, as y'all can see, we promised y'all we was going to switch the scenery up. Yeah. And we switched the scenery up a little yeah. bit. We in Richmond, Virginia right now. Yes, sir. And we have a very special guest. But yeah. Marlon, you know what I'm saying? You want to do the honors? Yes, I'm going to do the honors. So today we have a powerhouse. We have Sierra Thomas here with us. She is a speaker preacher and she is the creative director at one of the fastest growing churches around the world Hello. that is life church rva um and we're glad to have you here to see her how yes. you doing today what's up y'all what's listen good? i'm so hyped to be here yes. with my brothers um thank you i'm honored to yes. be here so i'm excited and if y'all if y'all came to the actual event the unplugged event we had yes, a little while ago she was on the panel with yeah. us as well and yeah. The backstage conversation that we had. Yeah, it was too good. Yeah, it was too right. good. We was it like, was we got to have a yeah. conversation. We had to put it on the cam for y'all. We had to get y'all in on there. So today we really wanted to just get a background of you and then talk about the the weight of ministry in a way. And when did you accept the calling and how did you really get into ministry at yeah. your age yeah. and the way that you're doing it at such an alarming and fast rate? Yeah. Because yeah. it's really been an exponential growth. Yes. By We're far. proud of you. Yeah. Yes. Very proud of Man, you. Man, thank y'all. It's crazy. Thank y'all. Shout out to y'all. Thank y'all. I appreciate <laughs> of course. it. Though. But God has been, um, he's been God. Like, mm-hmm. truthfully and honestly, I cannot say that I had anything to do with this. Yeah. Um, people ask me all the time, like, yo, how did you get into this? And I'm always just like, it was God. Like, yeah. I had nothing to do with how I got into it and things like that. I really um, was living a life that I grew up in church. Like, mm-hmm. I definitely, you know, was walking with the Lord yeah. all my life. But uh, I went to college. I went to ODU. Shout out to ODU. ODU. Seven yeah. Five. Yeah. Um, so I went to school there. And when I was there, I ended up just kind of like slipping away. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the intentions of like, yo, I'm gonna start a Bible study on campus. Mm-hmm. Like, I love the Lord. I want to lead people <laughs> to the Lord. But yeah. when I got there, they was like, hey, you party, you smoke, you Uh-oh. drink, like you go out. And yeah. I was like, no, like I, I had never really done none mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they got me, y'all. I was, I was <laughs> outside. They got me. I was outside, <laughs> and um, outside was just like, yep, here, here's what we do. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so I just like ended up getting caught up in just that lifestyle, um, mm-hmm. drinking, smoking, um, having sex, all yeah. of that, and. Uh, after a while, like God just kept like tugging and mm-hmm. pulling on me mm-hmm. and just like I knew that I wasn't supposed to be living this yeah. life. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt yeah. like he was calling me to something greater, something bigger, but I couldn't get out. You know, mm-hmm. I just kept I would go to church. I would read, you know, my Bible and do my devotionals here and there. But then I kept finding myself in this cycle of like shame and guilt. Yeah. Of, like yeah. I would do the thing and then I'd be like, oh, man, God doesn't want nothing to do with mm-hmm. me. Um, so I would just kind of like slip in and out of like being in my word, being with God. Yes. Um, and then like in the world, I always say that was like I was going between like like culture and kingdom yeah. like I was just trying to trying to do both yeah. um but then finally I got tired like mm-hmm. I just got tired yeah. of trying to do yeah. both like mm-hmm. it just was wearing me out of even trying to like keep up the facade because mm-hmm. people would see me out and be like hey yo like I thought you was a girl <laughs> yeah. who was leading like don't you lead a yeah. bible study like what are you doing here don't and like, fit in no more. all right yeah. I was like I'm tired of like trying to do both mm-hmm. um and so actually in 2021 like I did this 21 day fast yeah and I remember just being like god I'm tired yeah um like, Lord, I'm coming back to you. I felt like the prodigal son. It was, like, really one of those moments where, like, I've, like, realized I'm not living up to what you've called me to do yes. um, and how you've called me to live. And I was like, Lord, please, like, I just, I surrender it all. Like, I rededicate my life to you. Mm-hmm. And I finally, like, laid it all down. I decided, like, I don't want it anymore. And anything that was keeping me away from God, I was just like, I got to crucify it. Like, yes. I got to mm-hmm. let it go. I had to make a decision and just decide, like, hey, today I'm choosing to leave, like, this lifestyle mm-hmm. that I've been living mm-hmm. and then pick up my cross and, like, actually live for Christ. And y'all, when I gave him that yes, yeah. it has been a like 180 pivotal shift. Yes. Um, I ended up in ministry six months after making wow. that decision. That's crazy. Cra- crazy. Wow. And he had told me like when I had done the fast, like you're going to go into ministry. And I was like, no, I'm not. Like, <laughs> like not. I just was like, <laughs> yeah. one, I not go to school and get this degree yeah. to just yeah. like go into ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then two, I was like, my past is entirely too messy. Yeah. Like, there's no way I'm going to work at a church or do anything in ministry because mm-hmm. like, how could you use somebody yeah. like me? Um, and then six months later, y'all, I didn't apply for the job. Wow. I did not. Um, 
I, all I did was prayed about it, journaled about it, um, and they actually reached out to me. Mm. I was serving, and they were like, yo, we've seen you. Like, we want to have a conversation with yes. you about some ministry opportunities. We'd love to have you. Mm -hmm. And stepped in the door, and I've been here for almost three years. Yeah. Um, and it's been incredible. Gosh, That's so good. That incredible. is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. That's fire. Um, before we even unpack any yeah. of that as far as ministry goes, I know there's somebody listening to this conversation who may be a Christian, yeah. but is still dibbling and dabbling, playing the fence. Um, can you kind of talk about why it is so crucial to choose your side and how when we are dibbling and dabbling, we kind of limit God in a way. You're not fully experiencing God in all areas of your life. Yeah. 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 I would definitely say one, you're not alone. Yes. Um, it is something I think that a lot, I won't say everybody, but I do feel like a lot of us do struggle with yes. that, um, especially at like our age, mm -hmm. uh, because social media in the world is so like in our face yeah. that the world has a really good way of making it seem like what they're doing is like more fun yeah, and like definitely. we should like be in that. Um, but I would just say like choose and decide mm -hmm. because to your point, like we do not get to like the full access yes. of God and who he is mm -hmm. when we're continue to put ourselves in this position that we don't um, really surrender and yeah. get to see him in all he is and in all his glory and that he wants to reveal that to mm -hmm. us. He wants to make himself known to us. Yeah. Um, but that the Bible talks about us not being lukewarm yeah. and not going back and forth, like just being wind and waves tossing yeah. the mm -hmm. sea and things like that. And that we're just double minded yeah. and we can't, you know, they have the saying of like, Hey, if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall. fall like you'll yeah. fall. For, if you don't stand yeah. for something, you'll yeah, fall, fall for, for anything. anything. Yeah. Um, and it's just like a lot of times we just keep picking and choosing mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I'll walk with God on this day. But yeah. every other day, like I'm going to just turn to the horse or <laughs> yeah, turn to drinking yeah, yeah, or turn yeah. to, to my friends. And it's like I, I want freedom for people mm -hmm. like, with God. Life with God is life for free with freedom yes. and joy and peace and the very things that we're always looking for and seeking for. And so many other things we find it in his presence. Yeah. Um, and if we would just finally decide and say, like. I recognize that the life living with the Lord is a life that is better than anything yes. that I could ever try and create mm -hmm. for myself. Yes. We'll realize like we've actually been denying ourselves um, a life of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. um, and really when we lay it down, we and I think a lot of it is the fear of like, oh, well, I'm laying down things that are fun, yeah. um, mm -hmm. but you're laying things that are temporary. Yeah, It's temporary. That's and good. there is like an eternal peace mm -hmm. and an eternal joy um, that you pick up when yes. you choose Christ. Um, and so like, just know like the life is better. It's yeah. not always easy, but yeah. it's, is so much better. Definitely. Yeah. No, that's beautiful. And it's, I think it's in Proverbs where it says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. And I found myself in that like conversation with God and when God gave us the calling of, hey, start a podcast, start a Bible studies and start this group chat and do this and do that. I'm looking like, God, listen, I'm not, I'm not tired. I'm not ready to like finish sinning yet. Yeah. Like, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, nah, like, no, why, why, now that's real. Bro, like, that's, that's real. real. Like, yes. yeah. I was like, God, I just got my car. I, I can, I'm a little I'm older not, now. I can yeah. go outside. Yeah. I can hang out now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not ready to stop sinning yet. Like, yeah. even though we're not perfect or anything, but yeah. I wasn't ready to pick up the phone like, mm -hmm. when he called. Yes. Did you find yourself having that conversation with God like when he called you? Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> I always talk about like those calls from God. You know when people, certain people call you and you know like they about to talk your head off or like <laughs> they, they just calling you because they want something. Yeah. I'm like, sometimes I be feeling that way with God where I'm like, mm -hmm. he calling me like, I don't want to yeah, answer. Like, yeah, all, no, all. I don't want to have this conversation. <laughs> uh, but I was, I was in that type time, like for a minute, yeah, like mm -hmm. I just kept going. I think that's why I went back and forth for so long yeah. because like it did feel good in the moment. Mm -hmm. Like it would feel good of like, Ah oh, man, and also just being like uh, transparently, like I didn't want the responsibility. Yeah, facts. I was like, point. God, facts. like I don't want the responsibility of because people were coming to me and looking to uh, me, yeah, and it's yeah. like, uh, like you stand in this position in this light where people are looking to you and mm. I was like God like honestly I'm afraid of failing mm -hmm. I'm afraid of letting these people down Facts. I'm afraid of trying to like live up to this lifestyle yes. that I, I'm really not going to be able to maintain mm -hmm. um, and so I was like it's easier for me to kind of just like stay in the shadows kind of still do like yeah. I'm gonna just do my own thing mm -hmm. um, but God was like no like I have so much more yeah. for you and attached to your life and to your yes that like I honestly couldn't run from it no more like yeah. I wanted to but it it was just like every single time like scripture tells us like even if i made my bed in hell like yeah. there you are yeah. and i'm like i made my bed in hell and that yeah, man yeah. was right there yeah. looking listen, like listen. you done yet yeah like, come on, bro. yeah, yeah. Now, that's good um talk about how crucial it is to change your environment when you are nice. trying to give god your yes nice. because yes. i know there's many people that want to give god a yes but mm -hmm. the the environment the friends the setting the it, even family the school whatever it may be sometimes it's like hey i want to do better but I'm around people that don't want to do better. You yeah, know, how, yeah. how was that for you? Yeah, I would say environment is like, yeah. it, it's almost everything. 
Um, mm-hmm. I recognized that the people that I was around at the time were not living in a lifestyle that also aligned with like yeah. the direction that I was trying to head. And so I just found myself constantly in this like tug of war of trying to be that friend that mm-hmm. was always like, all right, well, like, let's go to church yeah. or like, guys, we should stop having sex. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, we yeah. should stop partying. Like, I was trying to be that person, but like, it's me trying to like drag mm-hmm. all these people in this mm-hmm. one direction yeah. when in reality, there were already people who were on the same type time that I was yeah. on and mm-hmm. in that, um, like, heading that way that I could have been in partnership with yes. because accountability is everything yeah, right. um and the enemy loves nothing more for us to feel like we're in isolation mm-hmm. or feel like we're the only one doing a thing yeah um, because it's so much easier for when it's a group and a, a multitude of people trying mm-hmm. to be like hey yo like we going out or mm-hmm. we're doing this it's easy for all them people to try and just convince you yes. to go rather mm-hmm. than you trying to tell 10 people like Thanks. oh hey we should stay in and do yeah. a bible study tonight like not like that's yeah. dead and so um i actually struggled with that for the longest time of feeling like i had to like l- not only was i laying down this life that i was living but i was also having to lay down people mm-hmm. that i was living with yeah. like the people who i was doing life with yes. i mean, grew up with mm-hmm. and some people who i even was like in church and stuff Man. with but yeah. they were like kind of just heading in a different yes. direction and it hurt y'all yeah. like it was really mm-hmm. hard and i was upset with god for a little bit because i'm like yo like i just feel alone like yeah. this feels like a very lonely walk it feels like i don't have anybody with me but i recognize that like i could not afford to stay in environments that were no longer cultivating like what God had inside of me and so I was like I can either stay with these people and miss out on purpose Mm -hmm. or I could choose purpose and know that like God is still going to send me more people like there's always like I have learned in this walk that anything that God takes away he also gives back and he gives back more Um, and so it was hard and I really had to give even that grief of like letting people go yes Um, and then trusting that like hey because I'm a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. So I also struggled with like trying to please people all the time. I wanted to be liked by everybody. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, like I want everybody to be like, if anybody ever ask about me, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, Yeah. she's great. People like, (laughs) no problem with her. And so it was just like, I had such a hard time of like also trying to please people. And it was like, Sierra, are you gonna be worried about pleasing people? Are you gonna try and please God? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna do what you're called to do and be that leader and step out and be different? We're called to be set apart. And it was just like, you just gotta own that. Like you gotta own the assignment um, and know that like that's gonna cause a separate separation between people but trust that wherever God is sending you he's also going to send people with yes you. bro ironically I love that because ironically we just had a um a Bible study on the topic of I'm not going to hell for nobody and Child. that's something that God's been yeah. like putting on my heart real heavily these mm-hmm. last two weeks but it's because the friend aspect like I had to realize that even Jesus rebuked Peter yes and yeah. Peter was one of Jesus's main man so yeah, it's like yeah 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 if Jesus had to rebuke Peter and he said, get behind me, saying because yeah. Peter was trying to go against what God's will was for and Jesus. He meant no harm. And he meant no harm. Yeah. He meant no harm. You be yeah. around may not mean no harm. Yeah. Exactly. Like sometimes your friends may not be, they only can see you for where you are and not yeah. where you're going. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you can't always be mad at them for not yes. knowing where God's mm-hmm. taking you. But at the same time, you have to have the discernment to realize, I'm not called to be around y'all no yes. more. I have yes. to let y'all go. Yeah. Everybody's like, everybody's going to go at the pace that you're yeah. going to. Yep. And a lot of people talk about, um, equally yoked or unequally yoked relationships, but they don't talk about the friendship aspect mm-hmm. of how you should have an equally yoked friendship. Yes. And like you said, emphasis on you trying to drag people around. Right. Yeah, and it shouldn't be like that yeah. mm-hmm. because iron sharpens iron. So Thanks. who's sharpening you while you are trying to sharpen them? You know? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. we like we got to talk about this at Plugged, and I, I mentioned it, and I know people were also like commenting and like kind of saying, well, like what happens when you're supposed to like aren't we supposed to show people yeah. Christ and things yeah. like mm-hmm. that? And I we are like, yeah. but when it comes comes to who we are in we talk about covenant with relationships yes. but there are mm-hmm. people that God has like also called us to walk with and who mm-hmm. are assigned to us as well of like hey how what is our friendship in the kingdom and like yes. what is our assignment and what is it that we're supposed to be doing together it's not just about romantic relationships mm-hmm. but we are brothers and sisters in Christ yes. and like there is kingdom yeah. attached to what we do um, and we just keep playing around thinking like oh yeah. well like I can still have these people like it's yes. okay just yeah. because I'm around them doesn't mean like I have to do what they're mm-hmm. doing but it's just like hey like don't even like take away your witness of yeah. like when people are like 
ah, because they say birds of a feather flock, flock together. together. Like, yeah, the, yeah. you know, the sayings are true. But like when people see a certain group or like if they see you associating with a certain mm. type of thing, you could have nothing to do with it. But just because mm. you're around just it, they're going to be that's like, true. ah, that's them. Yeah. Or like they're this this person. And it's like, oh, I can't even really trust if they're talking about God because they talk about God. Yes. But they also are always at the club, mm -hmm. always out, always doing all mm -hmm. these things. Yes. And it's just like, I don't even want to discredit my witness. Like, yeah. I need to make Facts. sure like, Facts. hey, you know, like not that we're perfect yes. like we are certainly not perfect um but i never want to mess up the opportunity to mm -hmm. to evangelize or yes. share the gospel with somebody because of the people that i'm like choosing to yeah. hang around with yeah so Jesus Christ, yeah that, that was OD. that's OD. <laughs> something that you said that stuck out to me was um grieving and mm -hmm. a lot of people we pray for god to change our season change our friendships we want more friends we want a relationship mm -hmm. we want a new opportunity but we don't let go of the old things. We don't let go of what was already in our hand. And a lot of times God operates like, I'm not going to even show you where you're going next until yes, you let go of that yes, first. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I love that you didn't get the revelation of going into ministry until you fasted for the 21 mm -hmm. days. So kind of talk about that grieving season and actually fully letting go of all of that so that you can embrace the new, embrace the ministry and different things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So God has been, I feel like this entire time um, in ministry, he's laid 2 Corinthians 5, mm -hmm. 17 on my yeah. heart. Um, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new, new creation. Creature, yeah. The old has passed, new has come. And so um, that has just kind of been the very thing, one of the scriptures that I've just really meditated mm -hmm. on this entire process because when we step into Christ and when we really we read these scriptures and we hear these promises of God but I think sometimes we really miss what they're saying yeah. um, and it's like yo like if this scripture is telling me that I am brand new like the old has passed mm -hmm. God is doing mm -hmm. a new thing I have to become okay with new yes and I have to become okay with knowing that wherever he's sending me if that environment looks different if that place looks different that this isn't like this is what God said mm -hmm. was going to happen. This Facts. is what he always intended. Um, mm -hmm. And so I really had to sit with that scripture of like, okay, if the old is passing and it's no longer, yeah. um, one, I feel like two things are happening. Like I'm having to uh, come into terms with the new thing that's mm -hmm. taking place. But then there's also that grieving process yes. of the old things that have mm -hmm. passed. I think the reality of it is like trusting that God knows that we're also human yeah. um, mm -hmm. and that we have emotions yeah. and that, yes, when we give God our yes, a lot of times it is like this wonderful like, yeah. yes, Lord, mm -hmm. I'm following you. Yeah. But then there are also things that were like, man, that does look like I'm having to say goodbye yeah, to my yeah, friend. Yeah. That does look like I'm having to say goodbye to a city that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. That does look like I'm saying goodbye to something that has been comfortable for yeah. me. And now I'm stepping into this unknown. Um, and I think God wants us to really trust and lean into who he is as mm -hmm. a father in those moments of like, hey, son, hey, daughter, I recognize like this is beyond something that you could be, you, you know, you feel capable of doing yes. on your own. But like, I want you to fully rely on me in this season and know that I can handle your grief. Yes, I can handle handle your emotion I can handle what you're feeling but I need you to trust me fully yeah. like don't try and hold on to the things I love in scripture um in the gospels when it talks about the disciples like wanting to follow Jesus mm -hmm. and um a lot of times we're like all right I want to follow you but like let me just let go me back and up. get yeah. this, this and like let me clean this yeah. up let me get this in order and guys like no like we, there's no time yeah. to waste. Like, we no. don't have time to go back like I like I'm calling you now in mm -hmm. the condition that you're in and know that you're letting go like you're mm -hmm. leaving behind all yeah. those things um but like as he hold like he'll hold your hand mm -hmm. as you walk mm -hmm. into the future and into the new um but yeah I just like really lean into that of just like taking in this new identity this new posture yeah. and being okay with that and know that like hey old things are gonna like yeah. it just sheds off of you mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but there is like that space to grieve yeah. um and take those emotions to God like he he can handle it yeah that's so good I brought, I brought this up before, but I love in The Chosen where it talks about the same thing you just said exactly, like how we'll feel like, God, we're not ready to even be called by mm -hmm. you in this moment. But at the same time, we have to realize that if God's calling you right now, that means you have everything that you need already. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. that means as you take your step, God will he'll supply all your mm -hmm. needs yes. as you go. Yes. So yeah. even if I feel without or even if I feel unqualified, I have to realize that God's going to qualify me along the way. Yeah. Right. I just have to walk in obedience. Yeah. Yes. And I feel like the biggest part that I guess most Christians or most people that's walking, like learning how to build a relationship with God, they struggle with it. It's more so the obedience aspect of, yes. all right, if God said this, who, who, whose answer am I like, who outweighs who? Yes. Does my friend's opinion of me matter more or does God's opinion matter more? Yeah. And it brought me back to John um, chapter 14, verse 15. It says, if you love me, obey my commandments. Yeah. And I have to remind, remind myself of that all the time because back to the topic of I'm not going to hell for nobody, like, 
my friends and my family in their mind they still have my best interest they want me yeah, to have fun yeah. they want me to want me to be at peace they want yes. me to enjoy myself mm -hmm. but at the same time they might not know the calling of what god has on me yeah. yes. so i have to understand that regardless of what y'all say guys were our ways all y'all yeah, like, yeah no matter who you are i don't care yeah. if you're my mom dad uncle brother sister like guys were our ways everybody yeah and that's the biggest way to put a smile on god's face when you really put him at the forefront and be like mm. god i trust you yes. no matter who believes in me no matter who believes in the word that you gave me yes i heard your voice and yeah. i know your voice for myself yes. yeah and i'm going to take a leap of faith on that every time i'm mm -hmm. so glad you leaned into that and even like our generation you, like i feel like one thing that we're fighting and not that the people in the bible didn't fight this but like mm -hmm. the voices and the opinions of mm -hmm. others yeah, yeah definitely and yes giving god your yes does not always look cute mm -hmm. at all it doesn't look like it's not always oh, logical that, either it's it's mm, not never. and that <laughs> is really not yeah, ever yeah, yeah, yeah. like i left my full-time job to yeah. i took this as an internship mm. like i was not going to be making any money wow. and like i'm living with my parents and like i knew like telling them like hey y'all like i'm leaving my full-time job <laughs> yeah. like i just feel like the lord is calling me into ministry mm. this is sometimes like it's going to feel like hey yo like god i'm giving you my yes and it's also making me look crazy yeah like, it's i'm, I'm also, betting on you yeah, yeah i like lord yeah. like here chips we go is on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole lot on the they table yeah. um but just stand firm on mm -hmm. god's word like if he said it trust like he's mm -hmm. not gonna make yeah. you look foolish he's not gonna make you look like it made to other people and in that yeah. moment be like yo what are you doing yeah. like sometimes i was like god what you got me out here that, doing yes. like what is this um but like just trusting that sometimes you will be in those spaces mm -hmm. where it feels like, man, my parents, I feel like, and not that their wisdom isn't necessary or they yeah. don't have our best yeah. interest at yeah. hand, but we do have to make that decision yeah. of like, hey, I'm standing firm on the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that may look like mm -hmm. us taking a pay cut or moving yeah. somewhere that seems unknown or taking a job yeah. that feels like, man, God, I, I didn't mm -hmm. know that yes. this is where you were calling me. And sometimes trusting God and giving God your yes is also looking like staying somewhere you felt like you were supposed wow. to. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot That's of times good. we feel like God is always going to send us out. But sometimes God is saying, hey, I just actually need you to stay where Be you're faithful at. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. need you to sit here. Like yeah. there's still something that I want to do in you mm -hmm. here yeah. before I take you to your next. Yes. Um, and so like sometimes we just got to honor here. Mm -hmm. We got to honor good. like That's the really place good. that God has us and know that like God can do anything um, wherever we're at. Like wherever. if doesn't always yes. look like him having to take us and move us and doing some like grand thing but like yeah. Mm -hmm. um yeah you can honor your here that's that's real good um something i'm very passionate about is serving and mm -hmm. on the way here we was listening to this podcast with ty galberth and he said it was something so profound he said every opportunity that i received was because i served and i took care of somebody else's vision as if it were my own. Yes. I want you to talk about so the serving process a little bit because I know when God told you ministry, a lot of people, they'll get a word from God and they think like, okay, I'm just going to walk right into it. Yes. But it's levels. <laughs> it's, 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 it's levels. levels. So it is certainly talk levels. to me a little bit about that process. <laughs> yes, I love that. That's crazy. Um, I, I don't know what I was listening to, but it was we were just talking about service. Oh, it was a um, sermon clip by... Yeah. Um, Pastor Brian Bullock. Yeah. Um, and he was just talking about like God coming back and finding a church that has been like serving, serving yeah. the kingdom. Like that's what we're called mm -hmm, to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like sometimes we get so caught up with Instagram and yeah. socials that like yeah. we're all striving for like the platform yeah. part of ministry mm -hmm. and like that's not it. Like mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's cool and all, but like that's not the most beautiful mm -hmm. part of it. I think that um, Christ is coming back to find people who have served yes. his mm -hmm. church, his bride. Like we have to get back to the book and what does it say that he's looking for? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a people that is serving and honoring the church. And so I actually got into ministry because I was serving. Yeah. Um, I was <laughs> serving at an event here that we had hosted. Um, and I just knew that like, hey, I wanted to get plugged in. I wanted to help mm -hmm. any way I could. Mm -hmm. Like God has given me a gift in communications and media. And I was like, let me, you know, in events. And so yeah. like, that's what I did. Like I was just like, yeah. all right, well, yeah. well wherever y'all need help like that's where I'll, I'll go um and I started helping and then that was how they saw me cheat code. Um, was when yeah, I was serve, cheat like code. listen yeah. like serve like serve at your local church even mm -hmm. if you're not in a church serve where serve wherever you're yeah. at like serving is what we're what we're called to do um and so it was like I started serving and even when I came on as an intern it wasn't like 
oh, Sierra, here's the yeah. microphone. It was, hey, like, I need you to help the lead pastor of the church, yeah. like, doing emails and, like, yeah. booking stuff. Here's a and, like, yeah. Real, yeah, like, here, clean this yeah. up. Like, put yeah. this together. Like, yeah. it was it was small stuff, but I think it's always important to remember your why. Yeah. Um, me going into ministry, one, was never something I want. Like, I didn't want to do this in the first place. So it yeah. wasn't like I was, like, trying to be like, oh, this is where I want to be. Like, I was fighting it the whole time. But then it was, like, when I got here, I was just like, I'm here to honor God um, with my yes, with yeah. my talents, with my gifts, whatever he's given me, it's his anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just supposed to give it back to yes. him. Um, and so it was just like, I am just honored to be here because one, like I'm this crazy girl from ODU <laughs> that like was just out here yeah. just wilding and like you have given me a second chance. Yes. That's what it felt like. It felt like redemption. Yeah. It felt like an opportunity to come back to my father's house and mm -hmm. be like, hey, whatever you need, Lord, like here I am. Yeah. My hands and my heart are open. Um, and it sounds good and like, I, I won't always like that. There were times yeah. where I'm like, man, yeah. Lord, I ain't making nothing. Like, <laughs> like can I yeah. go back to corporate America? Um, <laughs> like, I can make more money. I can do yeah. different stuff. Like, I can be on my own type time. So I don't want to also sound like this perfect Christian mm -hmm. where it's like, my hands and my heart are open, yeah. Lord. Like, yes, that was my posture. But yeah. there were also days where it was hard. And I was like, yo, God, this don't make no sense. Like, mm -hmm. God, I don't see the other side of this. Like, I, I felt like you said there was more. But yeah. sometimes it doesn't feel like... Mm -hmm. um, what you said, like, mm -hmm. I'm not standing in it. And so, like, I would just encourage anybody who just find, like, have found themselves where you feel like, man, like, I'm just serving and I'm just constantly yeah. behind the scenes that, like, God sees you. Yes. Mm -hmm. God sees you and he honors you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really not about the riches mm -hmm. and the the glory and the honor here on earth. It's really yeah. about our reward in heaven. Yeah. Um, and, and know, like, your reward is coming. And if he blesses you while you're here on earth, great. But mm -hmm. just know that, like, he honors you, he sees you, um, and the greatest reward is going to be with him in, yeah, in heaven. And so um, serve and know that, like, it's a, it's about your heart above mm -hmm. all else, mm -hmm. um, and that's what God is looking at, and yeah. that's what God sees. And he, he honors it, too, so I, I know he will honor it as well. So, yeah. What's up, family? We hope you're enjoying the episode so far. We can't do what we do without your support. So if you feel led to give, we appreciate you for sowing into the vision God gave us to advance the kingdom of God. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. It's something John Hanna says that I love. He says a lot of people want a microphone. They don't want to hold nobody's Bible, though, or they don't want to hold a broom. And, <laughs> yeah. and that stuck with me because sometimes I feel like, like you said, sometimes we got to check ourselves because sure. sometimes we think we're bigger than the mission or bigger than the vision. Yeah. Like, who am I to hold a broom? You know, yeah, right. and it's like, I think that's what helps me to stay low mm -hmm. with, with the platform, with all of this. I think serving at my home church, my local church, is what keeps me low. Yeah. We know that you travel all around the world now. Yeah. You're speaking, and I know that it's nothing better than serving at your home yes. church. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's like, it's something about coming home um, and being back at the place that, like, mm -hmm. saw you. Yes. At, like, Thanks. who has seen you at your lowest and at your worst and has just accepted, I think, like, just the posture and the heart of my pastors mm -hmm. um, and just this church that, like, they have an eye for seeing the God in people yeah. um, and then loving you through whatever that looks like, whatever mess and dirt you feel yeah. like you got to like clean up and clean off um, like that. They do that. And then they help cultivate the gifts mm -hmm. inside of you. And I just, I believe that's the heart of all churches and pastors mm -hmm. and like to find that for wherever you're located, wherever you're at, yeah. like find that, that church in that house where you feel like, man, I can really go here and mm -hmm. I can grow in my discipleship. Mm -hmm. I can grow in my faith. I can serve because the, the foundation, of our faith is so precious like Thanks, I think yeah. it's just beautiful to continue to go back there like mm -hmm. yes one day we'll graduate from milk to like yeah, the actual yeah. heart and meat of yeah. it but like to sometimes I just like I just want to go back to the milk mm -hmm. part of it like I just want to <laughs> go back to like the foundations of it because it's just so sweet there. yes um mm -hmm. to just have that like childlike faith mm -hmm. and just go Thanks. back to like man God I'm really nothing yeah. without you like yeah. I I really just want to like Personally, I, sometimes I'm like, Lord, I don't want to go in. <laughs> like, <laughs> let me stay yeah. here. Like, let me just stay in this posture. But I do know, like, there's an assignment mm -hmm. that guys, that's, guys called us. So yeah, sometimes yeah. we got to go out there and go further. But, yeah, there's just such a sweetness to just being right back at the heart of mm -hmm. your church Definitely and just being is. able to serve and give back. Yeah. I love that because just like how you said about, the, like, the, the child, like, heart. Mm hmm I remember my, when, I, when I first got my first Bible, I was so excited. Like, yes. I was on fire. I was yep. like, I want to get this Bible. I want to get this Bible. Too. Like, <laughs> I wanted all the Bibles, all the yeah. devotionals. I'm like, yo, why all. did you want so many? Yeah, I want it all. But yep. just getting back to that heart posture of that excitement for God and that energy, the 
the drive to want to see God and to yeah. be in his presence and to be in, t- in intimacy with him. Yeah. It's just, it's no better feeling than that. And I wanted to backtrack as well to the social media aspect of being in like people's face and all mm-hmm. that. Like how, how have you dealt with the pressure of having to document your life or being on camera, mm-hmm. being on yeah. podcasts, the social media aspect and being a public figure now yeah. that travels around the world? How has that been? How have you been navigating that pressure? Because that's something that we're also trying to basically yeah. get used yeah. to as well because yeah. it's a new it's a new spotlight it's a new microscope that's on your life and our lives as well and right now in the season that I'm in well that we're in honestly we're trying to basically navigate the aspect of opening up even more than what we already have opened up mm-hmm. so I've realized that God has been like redirecting my mindset as far as like your your healing is going to help someone else heal mm-hmm. but it's like you got to I have to document yeah. my healing process mm-hmm. so that someone else can heal yeah but it's like all right guy you want me to open up like all the way like, like how much lord yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah but at the same time like we like we said earlier off the camp like before yeah. the podcast even started like how our traumas or our biggest regrets or our biggest scars really are there to help someone else it's really mm-hmm. a testimony for someone yes. else yeah. our scars are not for us they're for yes. someone else yeah so how do you navigate that yeah that's so good i love that you even spoke to the scar aspect of it Mm. because I think that that's something I've had to um, keep in mind Mm. is that like are you revealing scars or are you revealing wounds hello a scar is something that you have already overcome (laughs) that is when you have a scar you can talk to it and talk about it and point to it and Mm. tell the story about it of Mm. like oh this is how I got this scar Um, but it's there's been time that has passed Mm -hmm. there has been a healing process that now yes there is a mark that has been left um, but throw the mic at you. It's, listen, <laughs> <laughs> there's a mark that's yeah. been left, but that's not something that's still open. That's not something that could still get infected. Mm. Um, when you're sharing a wound, you're sharing from a place that's still bleeding. Yeah. You're sharing from a place that's still open. Mm. Um, and a lot of times we find ourselves sharing wounds when really mm. you need to share scars. Yeah. Um, and I had to learn <laughs> that I felt like there were certain things that I was going through that I was like, man, I feel like I'm supposed to talk about this, but yeah. I was like, God, I'm still like, there's Raven. still some yeah, stuff that yeah. I'm like still dealing with. Like, I'm not ready to talk mm-hmm. about this. And he was like, daughter, like, I, I haven't even asked you to share that yet. Mm-hmm. Like, me and you are still working through yeah. some things. Me and you are still going through that. And I think we can kind of feel like this pressure when we're, you know, influencers and mm-hmm. on social media and everybody's looking to us and asking us like, yo, how do I get through this or how do I do this? To not allow people to push us into something that we're not ready for mm-hmm. yet. Um, don't allow the platform, don't allow the public figure and all of that to make you feel like you got to start sharing and talking about Mm -hmm. things that you haven't even Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's so good and um realizing like there's more to your story i think that there was like i feel like we all probably could go around and share that like one big thing that we've had in our lives and be like oh that's the thing that i'm supposed to share Mm -hmm. and i remember there was like a certain point in my life there was a certain thing that i was like well i guess this is going to be like this is my testimony like this is a thing Mm -hmm. that i'm like man i'm gonna have to go and share but like i wasn't confident in it like i was Mm -hmm. still like wrestling with like shame and guilt and all this stuff and finally people are like see like there's more things that God's done in Mm -hmm, your life mm -hmm. like that might be the thing that helps somebody and like you may share it in certain rooms and share certain places but like I don't think God's saying like you got to go to the stage and the platforms and just yell yell out like yo this is what happened to me this is what's (laughs) going on Um, but there are things in your lives that you can share there are some Mm -hmm. things that you have Mm -hmm. overcome and so I can get on here and talk about like yo I was drinking I was smoking I was having sex like I can say those things because I have healed and I have overcome them and they're not things that I'm still struggling with Um, and so like now I know that I'm like hey I'm able to take that testimony Mm -hmm. and I'm able to share and help with, help people with it and then there are some things where I'm like me and the Lord are still working yes, through it. and yes. I do believe there will become a time and a place where I will share that part of my testimony but I'm okay with like just knowing like hey there are things that God has done in my life yes. and this is what I have overcome and I share it because I want to give God glory mm-hmm. that he could take somebody like me who was broken who was hurt who was afraid who felt like I had messed up everything um, and could never be used again and yeah. be like nah he still looked at me. He still called me. He mm. said I was chosen. Um, and now I get to I get to use my platform to yeah. share it. And that's what I want to do. That's what I want to use my platform to do, to influence people to follow Christ. Um, it's not, don't follow me. Same. Don't be like Same. me. I ain't got nothing for yeah, you. Nah. Like, <laughs> I don't Thanks. have nothing for nah, you. Nothing for <laughs> um, but I would love to introduce you to the God that I know. Yes. Um, and I know that he will change your life. And so as people follow me, I pray that people will just want to follow him. Yes. Yeah. That's so good. I love that as Christians, we never really leave the cutting table. Yeah. I feel like... <laughs> Sometimes mm-hmm. people think that you've arrived as a Christian, but it's mm-hmm. it's always a he's always gonna cut. 
It may not exactly. be my, my cutting may not be your cutting, yeah. but it's always something. Yeah. Like, nah, fix that. Your heart ain't right. You may not it may not be sex for you. It may yes. not be alcohol. Yes. It may not be smoking or yeah. different things like that. But you have hatred in your heart. Yeah. You got resentment in your heart. And he's yeah. like, nah, come on. Let me let me cut on let you. Let me deal yeah. with it all the time. Let me deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that. Um but I want to get to that as far as you talking about your scars. And we know that you do woman empowerment. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. why do you have such a heart for women? Yeah. yeah. Good boy. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Great yeah, question. Yeah, smooth. That was smooth. Hard for women. I do. I really do. And the enemy tried to like even make me kind of want to shy away from mm-hmm. that because I was like, man, there's so many like Christian women influencers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, I just feel like that's what everybody is geared towards mm-hmm. is women. But I think that there's just something beautiful about the kingdom of women. Um, and when we finally step into like the understanding and the authority Mm -hmm. that God has given us. And I did not realize that there were so many people still on earth who were like, Hey, women are called to preach. Like when I tell y'all there'll be people in my comments all the time, like it'd be stuff. I'm like, I won't even preach it right here. Like, shut up. (laughs) But I'm like that one little scripture in Timothy, they hold on to that thing. Like they love it. They love it. They they going down that hill. They, they, they ready to fight for it. Every single time. Like (laughs) women not supposed to preach. Shut up. (laughs) But I'm, I'm preaching, ain't I? So like what, what? Um, but I just think that like, there's just been so much with silencing women's voices. Mm -hmm. Um, from culture from like slavery just all the things that like Mm -hmm. women have had to endure um but finally being in a generation in a space where like women's voices can Mm -hmm. be heard um Mm -hmm. and they're powerful um and i think just that uh, us as women like we go through a myriad of different things when it comes to like just relationships trauma family being a mom being a leader trying to Mm -hmm. like wear all these hats and do all of these things and finally finding a place to have that space to really just be us be free Mm -hmm. um and i think that when i finally found my voice and i found out the authority that i possess because Mm -hmm. of the god that lives in me it was like jack uh dr jackie green always says free women free women Mm. um and that's been like something that i live by and it was like god took the chains off of my life and now i want to go unlock everybody's women that i see that are bound in shame and guilt i'm like nah baby like that's not where you're supposed Mm -hmm. to be um and sometimes it takes other people seeing something in us that we don't even see in ourselves um and that I want to be, I, I do believe that God has given me a grace to see things um, and help see, help women see themselves for who they were called and created to be. Um, and then like, if I can help you walk in your purpose, if I can um, take the muzzle off of mm-hmm. another woman and let them unleash and like live mm-hmm. in purpose, I'm like, yo, like the world is going to be a better place. Yes, um, and sure. I feel like one of the things that like the enemy had tried to like keep me bound under is comparison mm-hmm. um and because he knew that that would stop me from like going like oh don't help them because yeah. like mm-hmm. what if they become better than you or what if they grow mm-hmm. and like what if people listen to them wow. and not yeah, you like good. just and i'm being real y'all like yeah, just real. like just struggled with it and just felt like mm-hmm. man like i'm always looking at everybody else and what they're doing and it was like oh well never mind like i'm not needed in yes. earth because mm-hmm. like there's already somebody else mm-hmm. doing it and it like it was hard like i still struggle with it and so i i'm constantly having to cast down those thoughts yeah um and just remind myself and like those thoughts in the enemy like hey no like the the kingdom is like it they yeah. it yes. needs all of us we're all, all of our voices get, yeah. yes i'm telling you there's so many i always say like there are more of them than there are of us mm-hmm. like the world is corrupt it's wicked yeah. and like That's true. we as christians have to rise up and we have to Thanks. take our position in the earth um and if i can help women see that they have a place in the earth Mm -hmm. no matter their past no matter what they've Mm -hmm. been through um that shame and guilt does not have to be the labels that they live under any longer um Mm -hmm. but that they can be women of freedom that they can be women of purpose um and if i can help in any way i want to yes yeah that's amazing oh i do i got i got a question for both of y'all on that aspect okay definitely on that aspect um (laughs) wow because you talked about (laughs) you talked about the comparison and all those different things and You've been speaking on many great platforms, big platforms. Mm-hmm. I know your life is kind of just flashing like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. Something that I struggle with sometimes is imposter syndrome. <sighs> Talk to me a little bit about that. When you're walking into these big opportunities and do you ever just look like, yo, how did I get here? Like, because <laughs> we often talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, yo, this was like, this is me crazy. Actually, like me? I yeah. did not <laughs> ask. Yeah. <me>. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually just preached a sermon in December titled, how did I For get real? here? And it literally stemmed oh, that's from crazy. me being like yeah. all last year, like the last half of last year was just like, yo, how did I get mm. here? Um, imposter syndrome is I struggled with it from the moment I stepped in yeah. ministry. Like the moment I stepped in ministry, like I all I see is like my weaknesses, mm. and I constantly think that there's somebody better to do it than yeah. me. I'm like, 
get like I some, promise I'm the same way. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yo, get somebody, yeah, yeah, like get somebody else to do it. Like yeah. I'm not supposed to do it. And I'm sure like our age also doesn't yeah, help. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't, just be, don't. like we're in our twenties. I'm yeah, like, I don't like, know what I'm doing <laughs> out here. Like I'm just figuring yeah. it out. Um and so yeah, imposter syndrome has been a beast to overcome. Um and I'm still going through it. Mm-hmm. Um like you said, like there are things that I'm I've been invited to and now I get to be a part of that I'm just like, I should not be here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um and not because I think a lot of times I part of it was it used to be the like, oh, like shame and guilt in yeah, my past. Like yeah. I shouldn't be here. Now I'm like, it's not even that because I'm like, we all got something yeah, like yeah, for sure. I'm just like, yo, I shouldn't be here because like this doesn't make logical sense. It don't make sense at all. It doesn't make logical <laughs> yeah. sense. But then I realized like you serve a non-logical God. Yeah. Nothing mm-hmm. that he does makes sense yeah. he created the earth out of nothing his breath yeah. it, no, like. <laughs> nothing that he has ever done has made sense mm-hmm. abraham go to a land i will show you where <laughs> i'll show you like okay yeah. like yeah. noah build an ark it's not raining yeah. what, I, is I build, raining? Like, what is raining we yeah. haven't seen yeah. it like there has never been like god's history his track record doesn't show that he's ever done stuff that mm-hmm. makes sense yeah None of it does. Um, and so I just kind of had to come to terms that, like, yo, when I give God my yes, that also just means, like, I just have to, like, go with the, fa- yes. the fact that, like, hey, this is not going to make sense. Mm-hmm. And I stopped trying to make it make sense also. Yeah. Like, I stopped trying to prove to people because what I also tried to do was, like, try and prove to people that I deserve to be mm-hmm. here or prove to people mm-hmm. that, like, oh, like, I, okay, I'm here. Like, I got to yeah, let everybody know nah. that, like, I have a, like, I don't, yeah. I can't prove to you that God chose me. I can't, mm-hmm. like, you just, I'm going to have to just show you Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And like you just have to experience this for yourself because there's no logical explanation mm. for us to be doing the things that we yeah. do. Like it just, it, it really is just a God thing. And so I was like, I can't give language to mm-hmm. it. I can't explain it. Um, but I'm like, if you just look at God's track record, like his history shows that yeah. like he calls people who are less likely to do the things yeah. that he he's called us to do. Um, and it just gives him more glory yeah. for it. I'm yeah. like, it it has to give him glory because mm-hmm. how else mm-hmm. how else will we be here? Yeah. <laughs> it took me a minute to realize that that aspect, like, I used to always question and be like, God, why me? Like, yes. Mm-hmm. And really, really, like, argue with him. Like, how Moses was arguing with him. <laughs> Back like, and forth. Like, God, Back and forth why are you choose me? Like, you know I stutter. You know I talk fast. Yeah. I talk 100 miles per hour. My mind's <laughs> way faster than what words come yeah. out of my mouth. So it's like, God, why are you choosing me? But like you said, he chose me because the way I speak will give him the glory. Yes. Mm-hmm. They'll know that it's not me that got me here. They know it's him that got me here because mm-hmm. I used to have a fear of public speaking. Wow. So, like, now wow. it's like I'm walking, I'm trying to walk boldly in yeah. the aspect of that he called me to speak. Yeah. But in reality, it's like, guy, listen, guy, listen, we can be, I'm still still the same way. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know why he chose me, right. but. Only because you said it, I'm going to walk in it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm starting to realize that the growth yes. and the qualifying that he's been doing, the sharpening of the gift and the and the skill and the articulation of everything, it's just crazy to actually look back and witness. Yeah. And it's like, bro, like we really are like getting qualified as we yeah. go. Yeah. I, and something. I've, oh no, go no, ahead. no, 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 no. I was gonna say something <laughs> I've noticed about God is that he will he often uses the thing that we want to shy away mm, from yeah. or the thing the insecurity. that we're, that yes. insecurity, yes. that fear. He is like, nah, like actually that's the very mm. thing that I want you to yeah. tap into. Like that's the very thing like I'm leading <laughs> yeah. and calling you to. And so it's just like the fact that you're like, yo, like I'm afraid of yeah. public speaking. Yes. And now he's like, I'm gonna have you speak publicly all the time. Like that's like, gonna be what? the thing that I, <laughs> yeah. I call you to. I'm just like, Lord what yeah. like yeah. <laughs> why would you why would you do that yeah like, come on bro i think we find more confidence in the anointing that he's given us as well because we know it's not us you yeah. know yeah for i mean sure, sure, i'm not the best sure. speaker i'm yeah. not the best communicator yeah. you may feel like that you may feel like that yes but i think that shows that how great god's anointing is it's like his anointings on my life i without his anointing i can't do this i'm a normal person mm-hmm. it's yeah. like you take that it's like a superpower. You right, take that, right. you take that away. I'm normal. Yes. Um, like in Space Jam, when Michael Jordan had the uh, the, the ball, the, and, and yeah, the, the super yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like you take it away. It's like I can't it's do gone. nothing. Right. It's it's literally gone. So that's how I look at it. I try to find my confidence in Him. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's like I can never boast. I can never yes. brag. And yeah. like Paul said, I boast in my weaknesses because mm-hmm. 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 this is only God. This ain't me. I'm I'm a puppet. I'm yes. a slave. Yes. 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 I think that's why Paul always said. Paul, I Paul, a prisoner of Christ, yes. servant of the Lord. He yes. always announces himself, let you know, it. like, yo, listen, I used to kill Christians. Yes. I, yeah, like, I'm just a puppet. Yes. I'm just a mouthpiece, you know? So I think that's a that's the beautiful thing. That's the most beautiful thing of it is that, like, our lives in its entirety have to point 
people back yeah. to him that it's lit- it has nothing to do with us um and i'm sure like that's y'all's heart as well yeah, like sure. as i know we talked about like just platforms and just feeling like man like how did we get here mm-hmm. and just it doesn't make sense and there will there will be people who want to try and say like oh like well they they strive to get here yeah. they tried to do this mm-hmm. and this is why yada yada like people will come up with man, like all kinds of crazy this stuff this was not in the plan like <laughs> I have, right it's yeah. like yeah. y'all have y'all don't know the half yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but the fact that like god uses people like mm-hmm. paul people like us mm-hmm. where they'll ask like yo isn't this the person yeah. you used to or isn't this the one and it's just like yeah i, I yeah, used to yeah, yeah. like that was <laughs> me mm-hmm. i used to do this but like now i'm stepping into this new creation yes um and i get to do everything i do for the glory of god i actually mm-hmm. Want to dive deeper into that yeah. aspect because our friend Kier, she's here behind the cameras. If y- y'all can't see her, Shout she's here. Shout out to Kier. Yeah. But <laughs> in her book, she um, says something so profound to me that has been blessed, that has blessed me yeah. ever since. But she said, God made you perfectly imperfect. Mm. And that resonated with me because it's like, yo, even through all my insecurities, God made me the way I am for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to basically let you dive deeper into that on what we can we tell the viewers that are dealing with those insecurities, that's dealing with the self-doubt, that's hearing God's voice, but still letting their doubt outweigh his voice in a way of hiding away from the calling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say do not let your insecurities become bigger than God. Mm -hmm. God is so much bigger than our flaws. God is so Mm -hmm. much bigger than the thing that we struggle with. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think a lot of times we give more power to our fears and our insecurities than Mm -hmm. we do to the Holy Spirit and to the God that's even called us in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that one thing that I love in scripture, um, honestly, you see it with all people, but Moses in particular, Mm -hmm. that every time Moses responded with an insecurity, God responded with who he was. Mm -hmm. That Moses Mm -hmm. was like, God, I have a speech impediment. Don't you, I am who I am. Yeah, yeah. I gave you this mouth. Mm-hmm. Like, don't you know who gave That's you this in the first That's place? Such a tough response. Yeah. yeah, like I am who I am. <laughs> like, like, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you good? Yeah, like, <laughs> no. Did, I said I have a speech impediment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I know who you are, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but just remembering that, like, God is so much bigger um, mm-hmm. than what we feel like we're struggling with and so like go like go back to the basics like the moment that you feel like those insecurities are rising what does scripture say about you Mm -hmm. you have to denounce every lie with the truth um and so like just remember no like i am fearfully and wonderfully made that i am chosen Mm -hmm. i am called Mm -hmm. for such a time as this like the favor of the lord is upon me like rehearse like write it down put it in places where you can look to it um all the time because the insecurity will never go away Mm -hmm. um but god does not either and like who he is never changes um and so we can stand firm on the fact that like hey i may be weak but it's in his strength like it's in his perfectness Mm -hmm. that i'm made strong and that like i can rely on who he is not on who i Mm -hmm. am it we were never meant to build you know our calling or our purpose on us and yeah, us alone thanks. like it was never he never created us to like withstand all of that mm-hmm. he made us in our weakness so that we could rely on yeah. him mm-hmm. um and so it's like i feel like we miss the the medicine to it like mm-hmm. yeah. we we try and do all these things in our own strength and yeah. god was like no that was never my intention that was never my mm-hmm. design my design was for you to lean on me my design was for you to come to me my design was for you to be in relationship mm-hmm. with me and discover that everything you need would be found in my hand yeah. it would be found when you come and seek me and when you seek me with your whole heart Mm -hmm. um and so just know that like god is so much bigger um and anytime Mm -hmm. you just come to him with his insecurity like he's gonna come back with with who he is who his identity is (laughs) (laughs) nah this is this is amazing episode um I think I just want to close out with what's next for Sierra in 2024. Yeah. What's next? What can the people expect? Because some may not have known you until now. And yep. I'm, I'm sure you know her now. You need to be on the lookout. <laughs> so, yeah. What's next? That's a great question. Um, because if you would have asked me last year what was next, yeah. I would probably not have answered with yeah. what the things that were yeah. next yeah. when yeah. it came up. Um, but I'm I'm really excited to just continue to be in a space of, like, giving God my yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just trusting, like, what's on the other side of that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm in ministry i'm in richmond i'm here um but i'm really excited to have the opportunity to be um, in different places mm-hmm. and spaces to continue to communicate the gospel and mm-hmm. um preach and share who he yeah. is and so um prayerfully like i'll continue to meet meet different people mm-hmm. i got to meet you guys yeah. through different opportunities and so um i'm really looking forward to just continuing to give god my yes um and whatever that looks like yeah. is what's next i i'm open to to whatever that is um but uh hoping to uh release a book this year That's um become up. an author yeah. um so that'll be be coming before the end of 2024 um and then who knows what else yeah. but yeah mm-hmm. preacher author speaker leader communicator yeah. uh creative 
trying to dibble and dabble in all the things. Mm-hmm. So oh, like I need to use you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. however however he wants to use me. <laughs> yeah. so we are very proud of you. We appreciate you exactly. for sitting here yes, today. No, I want to honor you guys and say thank you to um, just this platform. I'm, I'm going to take the liberty to do it. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just saying thank you for your guests. And just it has been amazing um, to see you guys grow and see the way that God has just honored you all. Um, I think it is such a beautiful picture of what it looks like mm. to, to be like an Abraham, to be like a Moses, yeah. to be like a Noah, um, to go against what culture is saying, to go mm. against the norm. Y'all could have a podcast about anything. Yeah. Um, y'all are creative. Y'all are dope. Y'all are young. Like, can dress. Like, all the things. Like, y'all could be talking about anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that you um, started a Bible study um, and began to cultivate a, a generation of people yearning and seeking God is something that is like that's is not happening. Yeah. Um, and so I'm so excited to see what God continues to do through you guys. Like this is just the beginning. <laughs> um, and so I'm I'm excited to see all of y'all's God dreams come to fruition um, and just the fruit of what you guys have planted in private um, and just being able to see that harvest um, for for everybody. So thank you for your pour. Thank you for your yes. Thank you for this platform that I know is blessing hundreds, thousands, millions. Um, keep it up. Don't yeah. stop. Right, we, we appreciate it. <laughs> versa yeah like, vice versa happy on the vice versa because <laughs> god knows his hands all over everybody yeah. yeah and i'm just ready to, i'm just excited to see how he continues to pour out and just use us in miraculous ways that we can't even fathom yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. i love how back in joe where he told joe were you there when i created the, the yeah. oceans and yeah. Like, yeah yeah i won't <laughs> right. I, wasn't actually. I wasn't there i wasn't there <laughs> so i'm already knowing that he's going to continue to blow our minds that he's going to continue to yeah. use us in extraordinary ways and it's really just up to us to continue to pick up the phone every yes. day he calls. yes like, Cause it's not gonna always be the same thing. I know he gonna continue to switch it up on us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. New game plans. We'll be like, God, yeah. we ain't practice this one. <laughs> right. This, this is new. Yeah. This one on the this one on the chart. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And we appreciate you again for uh, yes. even hopping up here. Thank yes. you for being on the platform. And I'm excited to see the feedback. Cause <laughs> I'm, let me tell you something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewatch this episode. Yes. And we gotta get her back again. We are gonna have to have <laughs> you come up here for a second time. Yes. Listen, I'm here. Whatever sure. y'all need me. Yeah. Sure. It's a lot. We family. Yeah. <laughs> we now family. we gotta get you down to Virginia. Yeah, actually, come Bible study. Okay. There we go. Hello. We Let have, me know. There we go right there. There we go. That's it. Yeah. Y'all heard it here first. I'm going to be there for Bible study. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. If you, if you feel like it, if you ever feel led to lead a Bible study. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's what I meant. Listen, okay. <laughs> Listen, take me back to my ODU days. Yeah. Leading a Bible study. Except this time I'm actually yeah. living, living for the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we we going to talk off camera for sure. All right, yeah, bet, no, bet, there you go. Bet. Yeah, that has to be in the works for sure. <laughs> um, can you let them know your socials? Yes. Where to follow yes. you, where to find you at? Yes, absolutely. So you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at underscore Sierra Nicole with two E's. C-I-E-R-A. N I C H O L E E, um, and I would love to to follow you. Hit me up, DM me. Let's talk. Let's chat. Um, yeah, that's me. Y'all will be sure. seeing her again. Yeah. <laughs> again, thank you for coming up here. Thank we you. appreciate you. And y'all know the vibes. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Send this to a friend. Leave a comment on what your favorite part of the episode was. Yes. What you learned from it. What you're struggling with. Whatever it is, leave a comment. We will respond. We go on. Show y'all some love. Yeah. And as always, it's always more purpose. You just have to find yours. Yeah. We lay out. We go on. Love. We say, thank you for watching. If you enjoy our episodes and want members-only content and other exclusive benefits, join the More Purpose YouTube membership located on the channel homepage.